Hi, I'm Todd Houlihan, Director of Olympus' International Mining Group. Welcome to video two in our technical tutorial series on best practice application of portable XRF. This video is all about setting goals and objectives for your analyzer at the start of a project and communicating them within your organization. Many of you will be pleased to see I'm joined by our vastly experienced business development manager, Marcus Lake. G'day, Marcus. Hi, Todd. Hello, everyone. Marcus, you've been doing this for over 10 years. You must have seen all sorts of different applications of this technology. Todd, I've seen many um, uses of this technology across uh, my travels around this planet. Exploration companies using it for rock chips, acid drill fines testing, diamond core, mining companies using it for blast hole analysis, uh, underground face mapping, production uh, companies using it for concentrates, for tailings, on SXEW plants, for testing of Doré bars, even customers using it for buying and selling commodities. Well, they can't be all using it for the same thing. They must have completely different goals and objectives that they're trying to achieve. Uh, every company has got a different goal and objective. Uh, obviously, an exploration company is going to have a different goal and objective to a mining company or to a company that's using it to uh, um, extract the ore and, uh, and make a, a refined good. Um, a company such as an exploration company looking for relative anomalies might not require a uh, huge sample prep and just looking for high, medium, low values. A mining company might want to do some sample prep, do an onboard calibration, um, and a company that's refining the goods would probably require a full calibration uh, against lab quality data. So they'll all be using it in different ways and setting up a different method, presumably. So uh, maybe we can give some examples. Yeah, a good example is uh, there's a a uh, gold, gold exploration company when I first started in the business who, was, uh, who actually was our entree into uh, the gold pathfinder market. Uh, this company was doing RC drilling, uh, they're checking for arsenic and base metals and the decision to put a diamond tail on the end of the RC hole to come back to that hole was solely made on their XRF, their XRF data. Oh, that's a good example. I remember uh, one of the early projects I work on was a um open pit copper mine, they were looking to get rapid decision making on blast hole samples and we did an orientation survey to see if we could get data that was good enough to differentiate waste from ore. So multiple tests on the RC sample, uh, calibrated against the lab, uh, found that we were never misclassifying waste from ore so they set up a completely different method to I imagine the one that uh, that company you talked about were using. Todd, uh, where else have you seen these being used in your travels in the field? Uh, one really nice example was a gold explorer who understood there was a good correlation between arsenic and gold. So they were testing all their diamond core for arsenic. Every sample above 50 parts per million arsenic was sent off to the laboratory for gold assay. Uh, they acquired four instruments over six or seven years and that company's now progressed to a mine and two of those analyzers have now progressed into the mine site lab where they're being used for regional exploration samples uh, to identify regional geological trends, look at the rock types by doing ratios on immobile elements and also continuing their arsenic and base metals work. What about you? Well, it's very interesting you say, you talk about uh, uh, the mine lab, Todd. I have a very big uh, gold customer who's uh, using them in their mine lab. They're looking at uh, pins from Doré bars, looking at uh, gold and silver metal percentages. They're looking at silica as a proxy for quartz for grinding. And they're even using it in gold and activated carbon. So the summary is all these different companies are finding innovative ways to use the technology have to set up different methods to achieve the objectives set out for the XRFs. Yeah, but it's very important to remember that your standard operating procedures should be part of your goals and objectives. Everyone should be there on, on the same page so there's no amb ambiguity with your testing procedures. I completely agree. One of the things I always say when training a new customer is, do you know why you're taking that measurement that day? Have you understood clearly the objectives of taking those measurements each day and the value that that's going to provide the shareholders of the company? 
making sure the customer understands that will ensure they optimise the instrument to achieve the objectives set out for it. So that's good food for thought really and it leads us well into uh, the next video we're going to do which talks about, expands on these concepts, concepts and sets this up for the orientation survey. When you first receive the analyzer to assess the performance of the instrument's factory calibration. So hopefully you'll be with us next time, Marcus. I hope so. We all hope so, Marcus.